Hello, this is David Wamsley. This is a quick video to go with a blog post I'm about to publish called WordPress Speed and Performance with Usage DD. Usage DD is a free utility plugin from the WordPress repository. I've been using this for a couple of months now and it's not perfect, but I found it really handy. And what it does is it allows us as administrators of WordPress to monitor the server resources in our WordPress install. So it gives us some indication of how heavy our plugins and our theme are and it's really convenient what it does is it adds a small box to the bottom center of each of our pages and so let me just show you this on my uh, starter site this is a site that I use to start all my projects so this is the bar and it's got these four metrics which I'll discuss in a moment but what I like is its convenience it's just there here it is giving me the resources being used on this page a front end page and if I go into any of the admin pages if I go into edit page here it will refresh and give me the statistics on what's being used here and it even works I've tested this when you're in the editor mode of the major page builders, which probably is not something that most people need, but I've become conscious that I'm encouraging clients more and more to go in and use their page builders to change things. And I also manage their hosting and, and provide that. So it seemed a good idea to know how much in terms of resources are being used as I encourage people to do that. Okay, let me move on to talk about what these figures mean as there's no titles here. I'll just cover this in my blog post let me just find it it's pretty easy to remember these after a while so the first on the left is the number of queries database queries mysql queries so it counts those up on the individual page according to usage dd this is a hundred percent accurate I did test a couple of other plugins, one that I've used before, Query Monitor, and a new one to me, thanks to David McCann, is Black Bar, which does the same thing. And they recorded a couple less queries than what Usage DD does. Maybe they just discount themselves, and that's probably the reason when they're all loaded at the same time. So I'm going to assume that is accurate. Something to say on that, it does give us on the repository, let me just go to their frequently asked questions for usage dd it gives us some indication on what the numbers mean themselves and this is pretty much in keeping with what i've seen before on this subject i'm no expert on this stuff i've just learned stuff over time and i'm still working it out but what it says here is what i've heard before which ideally you should be aiming for under 50 queries and if it's kind of over 150 you may have an issue with your theme or plugin or a specific page however i will say that i'm pretty much always around the 150 mark or over with my sites and i believe i choose my plugins carefully and I think it's probably a tall order to ask for under 50 if you're using WordPress and you're, like me, an implementer, using tools which are designed for various projects and various different customers as well. They're not going to be honed into just what you need. So... I think this here is a snapshot of a fresh install of WordPress with just the 2019 theme, which is, I think, probably the lightest that they've had. And it's just showing the sample page with a couple of widgets, which are in by default. So you're already up to 22 with just that before you've added in anything else. So you imagine you've got to add in your SEO plugin, security plugin, contact forms page builder and something i hadn't fully appreciated until i started using this tool is that many if not most of these plugins will actually add to your query count even when you're on your front end pages even if they're just doing back end jobs it will still add queries and it will add some other weight on these other measures as well now it does depend on the plugin and that's where you can use this to kind of test out which ones are heavy which are using resources and where but it's just something to be aware of so under 50 seems fairly unachievable to me as i say i think with the 2019 theme and you remove the widgets i think it goes down to about 13 as a sort of default so that's probably where you start off with so i don't worry too much about this i put it in context with the next one which is the time to process those queries and this is in seconds so it's very low here it's uh, 0 0.01 of a second but 
This, according to UCHDD, is slightly underreported due to something. I don't understand the nature of how WordPress works. I think there's some also some notes that you might want to check out for yourself about how any of these are measured when you're using something like JavaScript rather than something that's output in normal haste. TML. So it may be affected if you're a big user of Gutenberg, which is using React, or your page builder is. It may not be giving you uh, quite the figures that you would expect, or it might be underreporting those figures. So you might think you've got something very lightweight that isn't necessarily so. So there is a few caveats with this one, but I'm not. I'm still using the classic editor with the Beaver Builder, Page Builder. That's my uh, main tool. So I can still use this for most of my judgments. And I've, what I've learned as well along the way is that all queries aren't created equally. I used to get hung up when I first heard about this one and the numbers, but some are more efficient than others. So these two things go together. The next one is time to first byte, which maybe some of you know as a concept. I learned it much later, but time to first byte, as I understand it, is effectively the time it's going to take WordPress to do those uh, queries, to do its PHP functioning before it can serve up that first byte to load the page. And typically when we're sort of optimizing for the front end of our sites for the, the visitor view, we put on a caching plugin often, and that largely reduces the time to first byte. For me, it's pretty common for it to be about half a second in time to first byte. So when I, you know, when somebody gets a cache for you, a HTML view of thy site, they're cutting out that half second, which speeds things up the most. I think it's really useful to have some kind of measure with this. It seems pretty accurate to me. I think it depends on the the browser you're using, there's a note on usage DD, but when I checked it, what was measured here was pretty much the same as when I'd used one of the online tools to, to measure the performance without caching on. It pretty much tied up to be the same. And it's quite handy. It's going to let you know about those pages which are dynamic that can't be cached and how long they're going to take. So something like a checkout or cart page with e-commerce. And also, it's really, this is the problem with just looking at page load only because it doesn't tell you about that dynamic functionality. Obviously, if you've got an e-commerce shop, you want to make sure that a visitor is able to add something to their cart quickly, and that's going to depend on your server resources. So keeping an eye on that, I think, is a good thing. And finally, we have memory usage, which is, I guess, the RAM. And as I understand, it, this is set to 32 megabytes by default by WordPress. I on my starter site have that set much higher and I found really by using this that mostly as I go around the different admin pages and stuff I'm roughly within that area with the plugins that I would use on most sites it gets much higher when I'm using something that's heavyweight such as WooCommerce or if I load in a learning management platform or something like that it's going to get higher as I would expect but generally I'm keeping within that so I'm I'm often curious when I see plugin developers say quite routinely that you need to increase your memory limit because it may be good advice because you know obviously a lot of their customers are going to be using the plugins and they will need to have that memory. But it does make me wonder then whether their plugin is quite heavy itself and whether it's worth it. You know, some plugins are going to be worth it, the weight of it, because it does so much for you like a page builder. So um, it's, you know, something you can test out by just deactivating and activating your plugins and just seeing how things go. I will say one note on this figure. For me, and I don't know if it's just me, I've only been testing it on one particular server, which is um, my DigitalOcean server with Server Pilot. And it's gone very high, this figure. And it it's led me to almost thinking that certain plugins, because I've deactivated them and activated others, are high when they're not. So you want to check that it's probably about right. And what I've done to correct that, and I can do it on Server Pilot, is I've just gone in and I've kind of refreshed my 
uh, PHP version, which is um, 7.3 at the moment, I just go shift it to something else and shift it straight back. And it seems to correct things for me. I wouldn't be able to do this. I haven't tested it on Cloudways. I think Cloudways, you need to set PHP for the whole of the server. So just something to look out for. Um, it's not been too much of a problem, but just one that I've needed to do a couple of times to make sure I'm reading the right stuff. Okay, let me just quickly look over my site again. Again, so we're in the back end here. Let's just go back to that home page. As you can see here, the, the queries were quite high there. And as I was mentioning, I'm around the 150 mark here. Now, this site actually runs pretty quick without the caching on it. This is a very simple page, although it does have a, a gallery at the bottom and a subscribe form, which we'll be adding to it. It is a little bit overloaded because this is a template which is on an individual basis overriding everything in the theme so I can swap it out. So all of the font sizes, fonts themselves and, and other things related to them have been added. So it's probably adding to my query count unnaturally here. But it's a processing, yeah, so it's... a. Uh, 0 0.16 there is taken to um, process that and as you can see here it's it's taking sort of about half a, a second here to process all that I think that's a higher reading just for my refresh if you do a hard refresh you might find you get a more accurate figure oh I see that looks like it's processing too quickly here as I mentioned, I'm not sure this tool is always giving you the right figures, so you've got to look at it in context, which I always have done. But that kind of, I would think that's probably about 0.8 normally, and it's been about 4 most of the time I've been checking out this page. Let's just go and take a look if we go over to the contact page on there, which should have less, although it's got the queries from the contact form itself. That's half the... Yeah, pretty much half the queries that it's using up. At the moment, it's still recording the same amount of usage as you can see here on this particular page it's actually gone up in terms of the megabytes used but it has gone down in the time to first byte anyway i think i've probably said that all i can do on this plugin you can just play around with it see if it's any use i just think it's really handy to have while doing development just to remind me of the weights of those pages even if it's not correct it'll at least make me check things up and make me a little bit more conscious about what plugins I'm installing. To, to a certain extent, this is a replacement for something I used to do intermittently with another plugin. I used to check out the weight of like, Audition uh, new plugins using a plugin by GoDaddy, which is no longer supported, called P3 Plugin Performance Profiler. So it hasn't been updated in over four years, and it stopped working when PHP... 7 came out. I think it still works if you're using lower than that, but if you're interested in performance, you, you won't be. But I used to use this to audition plugins and also, and I can do that now with Usage DD to see if any of the updates on any of the plugins that I use have had a, a problem. And I've done that before with uh, P3. I've been able to report issues to the developers that they weren't aware of from an update. And of course, you know, it's just a way of keeping an eye out on the plugins that you, you trust because, of course, they are adding new features to serve their other clients, not necessarily you. And this is really where I came in to, I wrote about this just on the blog post, so I'll just quickly cover this, but I got interested in this. I used to look at speed and the front end page loading, but we had, I think back in two, before this in 2012, I needed to change our e-commerce shop that we had. So it was running uh, a little bit before that on a WordPress theme that did e-commerce and we wanted to move it to WooCommerce because that just come out and was one of the early adopters. I found a great theme on Theme Forest and in the morning, less than the morning, I got this beautiful site just exactly how I wanted, so much better than before, absolutely loved it, gave it five star rating and it seemed to go fairly fast for me. I was used to then checking the, the front end, it seemed to go fast but then as I added in the, the, all of the products, hundreds of them, started adding in the customer products, really realized that the database would grow even wider. I started to get concerned. It was getting fuller, slower. And I had good hosting VPS with one gig RAM, which was pretty good for then. And I had to increase it to two to get it to run quickly because the last thing I want is people being slowed down placing their orders or ordering their individual products. 
but I saw this was just an endless battle with it. I put forward to the developer that they want to speed things up and they added some more caching stuff for the front end. But at the same time, it was a very popular theme and they were adding more and more stuff for other customers. And I could see now, I think I was using uh, P3 then to... Uh, test these things and it was just getting heavier and heavier in the background and I knew that my site was going to grow over time because there was going to be more customer orders that I wanted to keep or I might need to add more things on it so from that moment on I be very, became very conscious of testing the back end and picking well my plugins so I have a a natural inclination to go for plugin developers who don't want to add in too much stuff quickly before they know they can do it well so they don't have those kind of technical debt issues. So what actually happened with this theme that I got, I, I abandoned it because I thought it was going the wrong way and I'm so pleased I did. I went to Genesis, it took me a lot longer to build this whole thing out, doing it more manually. But they quit with this theme after 18 months. I think it grew so big and there was such a major change with WooCommerce that it wasn't worth their while because they just added so much to, to make all of those changes across the board to all of the things they added. So I learned from that and that's when I started to learn about this. Anyway, I better get off because I'm starting to sound very preachy about this stuff. I hope this video was useful. If you know more about these kind of things, then please let me know. If you like the video, then please give me a thumbs up because as always, this encourages me to carry on doing these things. And if you didn't like it, then just let me know why rather than a thumbs down because I, I learned nothing from thumbs down. And uh, that's it. Maybe consider subscribing to this channel. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you again on another video. Thank you. Bye-bye.